Um, we are going to learn the word of God today. Um, we are going to learn from the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20. We are going to be reading from verse number 1. But we will see which scriptures we are going to read. Uh, probably we may skip other scriptures, but what is important is the context. I know uh, most of the people who did declarations from shrines, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20 is one of those favorite chapters because there is a scripture there where people uh, used it to quote and make declarations, especially if you are faced with difficult moments. Because according to most people, anything that is against you in courts, uh, anything that you feel maybe is to your disadvantage <coughs> or is to your inconvenience, you, you describe that as a war. It's a battle. You want money, you don't have money, you describe that as a war. You are now fighting with the demons of poverty. You start your own war, you describe the, 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 the terms of, of, that, of that battle. You start to fight. And if you ask people, how are you fighting this war of poverty? They do not go to work. They do not start businesses. They do not invest. They do not seek employment. When they want to fight this demon of poverty, they take Bibles, they, they, they climb mountains, that's how they fight. They climb mountains, they pray, some of them they fast. And if you ask them, they will tell you, I have wars, I have battles in my life, I have situations which are not well. Fugama onamate, anukbatsira. Those were some of the utterances that used to uh, encourage or to motivate us to do certain things. Be on your knees. If you tell people things are not fine in my life, they will say, be on your knees. How, how many days did you fast? How often do you pray? So all these prescriptions that we used to uh, find ourselves um, executing or doing they were because of the ignorance but the word of God is very clear we are going to learn today so I've titled the sermon that I'm going to share with you the power of praise uh, the power of praise that is the, the title of what we are going to learn today so many people uh, I know in one way or the other, there is a way that you understand what you call praise. Uh, if you say, let us praise the Lord, there is always um, something that people would think about to such an extent that uh, uh, right now as I'm talking with you or as I'm speaking to you, you already have uh, what you have described as this is praise. And uh, in shrines, they, they, there's what they call praise and worship. <clears throat> and when they talk about praise, it's more about dancing. If the, the, the song has got a very fast tempo, where people can dance, they call that praise. If you now sing another song, it's a bit slow, and they, they call that worship. So it, it, in, in the shrines, it, it seems to be uh, logical. To say this is praise, it's a bit fast. This is worship, it's a bit slow. <clears throat> they don't mind what they are saying in, in whatever song they, <clears throat> they are singing. What they are careful about is, is the song fast <clears throat> in terms of its rhythm or it's slow. Once you, uh, you give them a song which is fast, they will call this is praise. They don't even mind the words that you are singing there. They don't even mind uh, what is the theme of that song. They don't even mind where did the song originate from. 
Ndiyo hili kufakunani, mashoko wacha hili kufepi. Zuri kuimbuka, zuri kunzikudi. Zuri kuimbuka pa msoro pei. Saka wana waiti rumpi zoene simba. E, so many teachings that we received. But we are going to learn the word of God today. And indeed we are going to see that uh, the power that is in the praise is, 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 is something that we must learn about. So we are going to read, uh, we are going to learn again from the life of uh, Jehoshaphat. I know we had uh, quite a number of um, teachings that we have shared uh, from the life of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. The last time we spoke about the castles and the storehouses of Jehoshaphat, and we, we enjoyed the word of God. We were instructed by the word of God to really understand what these things uh, desired to, to teach us. So let us hear the reading of the scripture from verse number 1, uh, it, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 1. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria, and beyond they be in Hazan Tamar, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord, before the new court, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in, time, and in thine hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, if when evil cometh upon us. Okay, okay, let us read slowly so that we may not spend time uh, to get the context of what is happening here, what is the Lord desiring us to learn is concerning his word. So we see Jehoshaphat here, and uh, the word of God is very clear. Uh, on verse number one, it describes the group of people who came. Uh, against Jehoshaphat and the nation of Judah, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and uh, those who came from the Mount of, of Se, we are going to see from the other scriptures that he was talking about the descendants of Esau. So we see three battalions of people coming against the nation of Judah and Jehoshaphat, the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the those from, the, from, from Mount Se, the children of Esau. So, and when that happens, we have to understand the timing <clears throat> when this happened. So these people came at a time when, number one, according to Jehoshaphat, the Lord had actually uh, driven away these inhabitants to pave way for the people of God this is this we, we got from the words that Jehoshaphat said uh, in, in verse number seven. So in verse number seven, <clears throat> Jehoshaphat is showing us that uh, the um, coming in of these Ammonites, the Moabites, and the other people, uh, which are besides um, uh, uh, those from, from Mount Se, when they came, it was at a time when God did already did something. So he said in verse 7, Art not thou our God who did drive out, which means he's talking in, 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 in past tense, something that has happened already. Yes. So, Pane Zwanga Zwaitika, Mwaru Wakanga Ato Dzinga, 
timwe ndudzi kuti aite kuti vana wa Israel vagare munyika yakanga yapiwa ene naka kuna Abraham the seed of Abraham so that's what we see and on verse number 8 we also see that this happened already when these people or when in Israel there is the house of God the temple which is described in second chronicles chapter 20, 20 verse 8 as the as a sanctuary so god has actually erected or built a sanctuary and the reason why god built a sanctuary it is that he wanted his name to dwell therein so the sanctuary was built so that the name of the lord may dwell in the sanctuary so what is happening now in second chronicles chapter 20 is after the lord had already built a sanctuary so i i just wanted to highlight that so that you can see that this is post calvary transaction this is post the cross transaction this is after uh, the lord had already died we are going to to read a few scriptures but it's very important when you read to also understand at what time did this happen at what time uh, how do we draw these these lines to determine the setting at what time are we talking about uh, the the <clears throat> the issue of the invasion from the ammonites and what is their intention what is their intention their intention is um, um they want to to bring Uh, the children of Israel so that they may not be able to enjoy they may not be able to enjoy what the lord has actually uh, provided for them or has given them mwari vane zvavaita ku vana va Israel asi tikuona kuti pamazwa ya Jehoshaphat eh va Israel vakombwa vakombwa ne va Moab vakombwa ne va Ammon vakombwa ne varume kumakomo eh ase ikoko vakomba panguva yekunge va Israel va munzvimbo yavakanzi namwari vagari saka Jehoshaphat ari ku nyengetera Jehoshaphat ari kutaura akatarisa nemaringene zvasangani kwanazvo nevana va Israel so i just wanted to 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 draw you to this attention so that you may understand as we read so very important because if we do not understand verse 7 and verse 8 we may not be able to understand this issue of praise that we want to share with you so where is the victory of israel or where is the victory of judah going to come from according to jehoshaphat the victory of judah is based on the sanctuary where in in which we find the name of the lord So he says when they arrived at their place they've managed to build a sanctuary there in for thy name so you you actually gave us an instruction that once this uh, this sanctuary is built when you are now in a war situation when you now go to battle your victory is going to be centered on the sanctuary which is built so what did the lord say Israel should do when they are confronted with evil when they are confronted with enemies when they are in a battle front what should they do verse number 9 if when evil comes upon us as the sword judgment or pestilence or famine we stand before this house and in thy presence for thy name is in this house and cry unto thee in our affliction then thou wilt hear and help so 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 Uh, let us not be very quick let us be very, a little bit slow when we are reading the scriptures what we have seen now is from verse number one, we, we we are not told that it is evil that came mm-hmm. we are told that uh, the children of moab came and the children of ammon came and they came with them uh, other beside the ammonites they came to 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 battle with Jehoshaphat mm-hmm. but when Jehoshaphat is praying now he is pointing us to a sanctuary 
where he said, the Lord, you decided to put a sanctuary and in this sanctuary, your name dwells there. Mm -hmm. So the power of the sanctuary is not the sanctuary itself. It is the name that dwells in the sanctuary. And you guaranteed us, this is Joshua for the praying, you said, if evil, when evil come upon us, if is going to come upon us in various dimensions, it can be a sword, <clears throat> it can be judgment. So there is evil that comes in forms of judgment, or evil can come in, in, term, in form of a sword, or evil may come in form of a pestilence or a famine. You instructed us that we should stand before this house, that sanctuary. You said, there is a sanctuary in Judah, there is a sanctuary in Jerusalem. When evil come, you must stand before this house and in thy presence. And he decided to highlight what is it that he calls his presence. He says in, in open brackets, for thy name is in this house. So when we talk about his presence, we are talking about his name. Yes. <laughs> his name is in this house. In, in other words, his presence is in, his, in this house. Where should we stand? We should stand before this house. We should actually stand in his presence. What is his presence? The name of the Lord is his presence. The name which he decided to put in the sanctuary. And you instructed us, once we stand our feet on this, uh, in this house, in your presence, when we cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou to hear and help. So, what if Joshua are you talking about this then? And now, behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, yes. whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. So, he's describing the evil that he, he, he was mentioning in verse number 9. So when you look at the children of Ammon and Moab and those of Mount Say, we are talking about evil. Mm -hmm. That's what we are talking about. We are talking about evil. That's what we are addressing. It's about evil. So this war, this battle that we are talking about, it is not a battle against people. It is a battle against evil. <laughs> It is a battle against evil. So they've come now. Those from Mount Se are here. Those from Moab, they are here. The Ammonites, they are here. And what should we do? Verse 11. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. So what, what, what I've just described before, when you see this evil coming, or when you see these Moabites, the Ammonites, the children of Mount, from Mount Se coming, their interest or their intention is very clear on verse number 11. They want to cast us out of thy possession, mm -hmm. which thou hast given us to inherit. So there's an inheritance that we have received from the Lord. And for us to stay and remain in this inheritance, we have to be in his presence, we have to be in the sanctuary because that is where he has decided to put his name and we have realized that his name is his presence. So what we have to find out right now is as we are progressing with this teaching is whether we are in his presence or if we have any evil that has come against us, what is the intention of this evil? This evil is coming to cast us out of thy possession. Mwari ane naka ya haka tipa. Ende naka hii. Taka hiti ya kupu wana mwari. Nukuti hatina kuifaitila naka hii. Ndu ya tana nguru wapo kuti. Panga shitawara kuti. Pa verse 7. At not thou our Lord. Who did this to drive out the inhabitants of this land. Before thy people Israel. So when we talk about this inheritance. It is the art. It is the work. It is the handwork of God himself. For us to possess, 
for us to be at this place, for us to be in this land. It is the Lord who have driven out the inhabitants of the land. So he actually gave us for an inheritance. He gave us an inheritance. But we see every time there is a challenge. We are going to see the children of Ammon, the children of Moab, the children of Mount Say, coming to do what? To drive us out of the possession of that land which you have given us, according to verse 11, to cast us out of thy possession. Mm -hmm. So beware of this evil. Beware of the Moabites. Beware of the Ammonites. Beware of the children of Mount Say. If you are not careful, you are going to be cast out of God's possession. Uchaviswa panaka ya wakapi wapachena na mngari. Nukuda kwa mwabia. Nukuda kwa amwena. Nukuda kwa wanakoma na wabaku bakomo. Ase. Wazukuru wa iso. <laughs> they are going to come. So, this is the battle that we are constantly going to have. We have a possession, we have an inheritance to which we are called. And the reason why we should maintain this possession is we were given this possession for our inheritance. But evil has come to dispossess us. So what should we do? Verse 12. Oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither know we what to do. But our eyes are upon you. You see now. So what we should also acknowledge is that this great company is a mighty company. But what needs to be done now, what needs to be done is God should judge them. Otherwise, if God is not going to judge them, ourselves on our own, we do not have the strength to stand up against this great company that cometh against us. So this company is so great in that we rely on God himself to judge them. O oh, our God, will thou not judge them? They need to be judged. <laughs> this great company. There is judgment that should be pronounced to them. Otherwise, ourselves, we cannot stand against them. And what happened? And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Yes. Then upon Jahaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jael, the son of Matania, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Yes. And he said, yes. How can ye, all Judah, mm -hmm. and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord unto you, be not afraid or dismayed by reason of the great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Yes, what Tomorrow, should we do? Yes. go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeria. So, so if you look at verse number 16, <clears throat> already we see uh, how this battle is going to be, uh, to be fought. Yes. So the instruction which is given to Israel there is for Israel to go down. Mm -hmm. But as to these Ammonites and the Moabites and the children of Seh, they are going to come up, which means already we see the children of Israel put uh, at a position whereby they are on a higher altitude. Mm -hmm. They are at a place where if they look at these enemies, if they look at this evil, which we, we have now known, that is describing evil, is, is, is going to be confronted from a higher altitude position, which means when we go and fight the Ammonites, the, the Moabites, and the children of Seh, we are going to be going down. But Iwo, my Moabites, they will be coming up. So it's a battle between those going down, fighting against those who are coming up. By virtue of the altitude, already at this position, we, we can see, we can tell that those who are coming from a higher ground or from a higher position, they are at an advantage than those who are coming up to fight against them. So already the battle 
a few disputed in favor of those who are under Jehoshaphat, in favor of the, of the Jews. And we, we already know, I've highlighted, why do we have this tilt in favor of the people of God? There is something which happened, which tilted the, the, the field to put the children of God on a higher altitude, at a position where they are in on a higher place. So this is what is going to happen. So let's see. There is one who has risen uh, upon which the Spirit of the Lord came, which means whatever this uh, Levite was going to say, uh, Jahaziel, whatever Jahaziel was going to say, these are not his words. So he is standing there as a prophet. In other words, the Spirit of God was speaking through him. It got to a time where the children of Judah needed a prophetic message, a word from a prophet, which was going to tell them. In as much as, remember very well, that we, are, we, are, we have highlighted according to Jehoshaphat's words, that this victory, it was going to be based on a sanctuary which was built, and it was going to be based on the position or condition that the name of the Lord dwells in the sanctuary. As long as these people are in the sanctuary, as long as these people are looking in the direction of the sanctuary, as long as these people are looking at the temple which God has actually built, they were going to be guaranteed of victory on account of the name of the Lord which dwelled there. Which means there is no way that when they are standing in the presence of the Lord, they were going to be defeated by another nation which was going to rise against them. So their victory is based on the sanctuary which was built already. We are going to see, we are going to go to the book of uh, 1 Kings chapter 8 and listen to the words, because the words that Joseph was quoting here, they were also said by Solomon when the temple was built in Israel. In First Kings chapter 8. We are going to go there soon. But right now what we are just doing is. I'm just showing you as we are reading. These scriptures so that. You may have an understanding. Uh, at least of where we are coming from. And where we are going. So but on verse number 16. I like uh, the, the description there. Tomorrow. Which ye, means. Yes. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz. Yes. And you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. So what should we do? Verse 17. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Yes. Set yourselves. Stand you still. Yes. And see the salvation of the Lord with you. Yes. O Judah and Jerusalem. Yes. Fear not. Yes. Nor be dismayed. Yes. Tomorrow go out against them. Yes. For the Lord will be with you. So this is the... The way that we are going to fight, the method is called, you need not to fight. Mm. Let's go and fight, mm. but you need not to fight. Yes. That's the message. In this battle, you need not to fight. What you need to do is to set yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. And I've already highlighted verse number 8 is the explanation to all this. The fight was fought already. You don't need to fight. But you have to understand which fight are we talking about. Because you are going to have the scriptures where you are going to be told about let us fight the good fight of faith. But here we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are reading scriptures which are restricting us or restraining us to go and fight. What should we not fight against? What should we not fight against? If we should not fight against the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the children of Mount Se. Why? Because the victory has been guaranteed already. There is a fight which has happened before, and what we just need to do now is to stand firm. To stand firm. That's what we should do. We should do. So, verse number 18, what happened to Jehoshaphat? And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. Yes. And the Levites of the children of Kohathites mm -hmm. and of the children of Kohites 
stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Yes. And they rose early in the morning and yes. went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. Yes. And as they went forth, mm -hmm. Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Yes. Believe in the Lord your God. Yes. So shall ye be established. Yes. Believe his prophets. Yes. So shall ye prosper. Yes. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. Yes. And that, and that should praise the beauty of holiness. Yes. As they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. So that was the song. What happened when they started to sing? And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Yes. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Se, everyone helped to destroy another. And what happened? And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Verse 25. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. Okay, let's end there for now. So this is what we hear from how the children of Judah were to fight against this fight. Mm. So I think I had already highlighted the, the main issues that we need to ask ourselves questions in this manner. Mm -hmm. So like I said before, of course, we know from the scriptures um, uh, about the, the relationship between the Old Testament books and this New Testament gospel that we preach. Uh, this gospel is preached from the Old Testament scriptures. It's a pattern whereupon... Uh, the interpretation of uh, the gospel of Christ is actually extracted from the Old Testament scriptures. But there is one condition that you have to understand. Um, according to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1, we see the Old Testament having a shadow of good things to come, uh, but not the very uh, same image of those things. That, that, that shadow is not a perfect one. Uh, there are going to be um, inconsistencies and certain issues that do not bring out clearly uh, the perfect image of the New Testament. But what we know is when we relate the Old Testament scriptures with the Old Testament scriptures, we know that the Old Testament scriptures, they carry the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, when we look at Jehoshaphat in, 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 in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, like I've, I've, I've already highlighted, we see now uh, Jehoshaphat representing our Lord Jesus Christ, but during the dispensation, when the Holy Spirit is sent down from heaven to actually lead the people of God to, for them to possess the inheritance to which they are called, they are already in that land, they are already in the New Testament, the Lord has already driven away the inhabitants of that land. They, they are already <clears throat> built, or they have already built a sanctuary in their midst, because it is the sanctuary which was going to determine whatever they are going to face. So when Solomon was praying in First Kings chapter eight, let's go to First Kings chapter eight and hear the law, the words of of Solomon when he was dedicating um, this house of the Lord. So let's hear the words that he said as concerning to what was going to happen. Um, let's start to read from verse number um, verse number 27. What did he say? But will God indeed dwell on the earth? That was the question. Is God going to dwell on earth? Yes. Behold the heaven and the and the heaven of heavens 
cannot contain thee. Yes. How much less this house that I built it. So when Solomon ended building the house, he made this conclusion. This is not the exact house in which God was going to dwell. But it's going to be a shadow like we've read in Hebrews chapter, chapter 10. But this temple which Solomon built, he asked the question, is God going to come down and dwell on earth? What I know is the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. How much less this house which I have built it? So why did you build this house? Yes. Yet if thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant, yes. and to his supplication, O Lord, God, o Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy, which thy servant prayeth uh, before thee today. Yes. That thine eyes may be open towards this house night yes. and day. Yes. Even towards the place of which thou hast said, My name shall be there. So, uh, take, take, take note of every time when this sanctuary or this house is mentioned, it was built so that God's name shall be there. Those are the ones sanctuary. Can I make one? Sit down, Marie, Momo. Could you walk to Wapo or Marie, Momo? Zimbo, I'm a one. I need to stay there, Marie. Don't Zimbo. I need Wapo or Marie. So the presence of God is centered on the name. There's more to this name, and make no mistake. When he built this house, he wanted to place his name in that house. Every time when he mentions the sanctuary, he mentions the name. So you have determined to put your eyes towards this house, night and day, towards this place thou have said, my name shall be there. So God actually said, my name is going to be there. And let's just maybe um, shed more light a little bit on that name. Let's go to, 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 to John, John chapter 17. And here, um, what the Lord said concerning the name of the Lord. So, he wanted now to clarify. He wanted to clarify, he was talking about um, his disciples, his, his, those that belong to him, those that he have received from the Father. Knowing very well that according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, those was the Spirit of God was going to dwell inside of them. They become the temple of God, which means we are not talking about any temple which is physical. We are talking about those who have received the Spirit of God inside of them. These uh, form part of the true temple of God. So when the Lord was addressing his disciples, he was actually uh, confirming what the Lord had prophesied in the, through the mouth of Solomon. So in John chapter 17, we want to see what was the Lord doing when he came to his disciples or when, during the time when he was in the flesh. Verse number four. I have glorified you on the earth. So when the Lord came, he wanted to, glor to glorify God on the earth. Yes. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. So he actually said, the work that you gave me to do, I have finished the work. Yes. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So he's showing us that soon after he has finished the work, God or the Father was going to glorify him with the glory which he had. Yes. I have manifested thy name unto the men yes. which thou gavest me out of the world. Yes. Thine they were, yes. and thou gavest them me, yes. and they have kept thy word. You see now, so when he, talk, he, he spoke about manifesting God's name, whenever you saw him, he was coming on earth to glorify God here on earth. He was coming to manifest God's name unto the men. The manifestation of God's name is not going to, was not going to be done to all men under the earth or in the world, but he was going to manifest God's name to those whom God has given him. They have kept thy word, which means this issue of the name is connected to the word. Let us see how and in what way did he manifest God's name. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. 
How did you achieve that? For I have given unto them the words which thou givest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, yes. and they have believed that thou did send me. So those who have, who have understood the mission of Christ here on earth, they are the ones who now know the name of God, they are the ones who, unto whom the name of the Lord was manifested. So when he was preaching the word, when they received these words, those who received the words, they have actually received the name which thou have given me. Yes. Because the second word is which means Gamchira Zita Ramakatindivaratidze. Zita Ramakatindivaratidze. Vagamchira Vapo Wenyu. Nukuti Magati Mimpanis Tarenyu. Dupano Vapo Wenyu. Your presence is in your name. Now I've manifested that name. So when the Bible is talking about the name, it is talking about the whole words which the Lord spake unto us, his people. And when we receive those words, we are actually in his presence. So the presence of God is not a myth, is not a mystery, is not something that um, is, 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 is confusing. It's not something which you cannot describe to the people. If I ask you today, are you in the presence of God? You say, Pastor Bale, what is he talking about? You want to hear earthquakes and, and a few vibrations in your body for you to confirm that you are in the presence of God. Once Jesus, our Lord, has manifested God's name to you in the form of the words that he has spoken, what are these words which we should believe? They should believe that I came from you and that I was sent by you. In other words, they should understand and believe the mission of Christ here on earth. Those who say Christ came and manifested in the flesh so that our sins are forgiven. Those who say he was wounded for our transgressions, according to Isaiah 53. Those who say when he was suffering, he bare in his body our, our, our transgressions, according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Those who have that, those words, those who have those, that confirmation, they believe that I came from you. They believe the mission of God here on earth when God was in the flesh. Those are the ones who have received the manifested name. This is the name of God. This name of God was given to our Lord Jesus Christ. When he came here on earth, he manifested this name to God's people. And what the people of God did, they received the word. They kept the word. When they kept the word, they now belong to, to you. And in Acts chapter 4, verse number 12, when uh, the apostles were preaching, they demonstrated, no, you, why are you confused? What we are doing here, we are showing you that name. Uh, don't think that it is us who is doing this. No, we are just prophets. And that's where I was going, because we have a prophet in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. What is the duty of that prophet? That prophet was going to remind people that they should not fear. What should the people do? They should be reminded of the sanctuary which the Lord had built. So this is what Apostle, Paul, Apostle Peter was preaching. This is what he was saying. Don't look on us. Remember, all matters that has to do with salvation, all matters that has to do with our spiritual healing, they are not put in people. No, they are put in the sanctuary. What did he say on Acts chapter 4, verse 12? Where is salvation? Neither is there salvation in any other. There is no salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So there is no other name that was given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. So I want you to see then the reason why he placed his name in the sanctuary is for no other reason but for salvation. The reason why he has decided to build a sanctuary and in that sanctuary he put his name. 
it is not so that when you are you want to get married you get into the sanctuary you benefit from the name that god has put in the sanctuary god cannot put his name in the sanctuary for those uh, small uh, issues no the matters that god has established the sanctuary and decided to put his name it is for salvation purposes it's for salvation it is for salvation so let's go back to first kings chapter 8 and let's see whether it's true that it is for salvation continue from that scripture where we're reading evangelist we on verse number um, uh, first kings chapter 8 um verse number 28 yes 28 yes yet thou it respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication o lord my god to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy self thy servant prayeth before thee today yes that thine eyes may be up open towards this house night and day yes even toward the place of which thou hast said yes my name shall be there yes that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make towards this place verse thirteen and hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant yes and of thy people yes. israel when they shall pray towards this place yes and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place yes and when thou hearest forgive when you hear whatever are going to say may you forgive which means it was about forgiveness of sins verse 31 If any man trespass against his neighbor and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear and the oath comes before the, thine altar in this house yes then hear thou in heaven and do and judge thy servants go condemning the wicked yes to bring his way upon his head yes and justifying the righteous yes to give him according to his righteousness verse 33 when thy people israel be smitten down mm-hmm. before the enemy yes because they have sinned against thee yes and shall turn again to thee and confess thy thy name yes and pray yes. and make supplications unto thee in this house yes then hear thou in heaven and yes. forgive the sin of thy people israel yes and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers you see now so you can read on and on and on he is confirming the issue of forgiveness of sins if you are surrounded by enemies and you pray looking at this house in the direction of this house may you forgive them which means the purpose why the name of the lord is placed into that sanctuary it is for salvation purposes so that's why in Acts chapter 4 verse 4 it was very clear that the name which God has given under heaven there's only one name and the purpose of that name is that we must be saved is for salvation so that's why the name of the Lord is there so whenever we are preaching the words of the Lord when we are confirming to you the words of the Lord when we are saying this is what the Lord has instructed you to do or this is what the lord has instructed you to live we are actually manifesting uh, we are showing you the name is the lord manifesting the name of god unto you the name of the lord is in the sanctuary for what reason for salvation purposes which means those who are coming to church those who are coming to the service we are not going to guarantee you anything but salvation it is for salvation purposes it is for the forgiveness of sins god has put a sanctuary in the midst of the people he want to dwell there he has placed his name there so that in as much in as far as salvation is concerned people are going to for, uh, receive forgiveness of sins so even if we go to the book of uh, exodus chapter 15 verse 17 uh, i remember we we read these scriptures when we preach the mini series the sanctuary uh, to to realize what the lord was actually saying concerning his sanctuary because the whole issue here is about the sanctuary 
So let's hear what the Lord said uh, concerning his sanctuary, his house, which he was going to build himself. Uh, and we know it was going to take him, it was going to cost him to build this house. Because he was not, he was not going to assign some other people to do the construction. But he himself, he was going to use his hands to build his sanctuary. Verse 17. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance. So you are going to have your people, you are going to bring them in uh, into your possession. And mm -hmm. you are going to plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance. Yes. In the place. It is a place, this, this one. O Lord. Yes. Which thou hast made for thee to dwell in. In the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. You see now, so if God is dwelling in the sanctuary, if you say, I want to be in the presence of the Lord, where exactly should you be? If you are going to be in the sanctuary, and now God has constructed a sanctuary for him to dwell there, which means those who are in the sanctuary, they cannot say, where is the presence of God? I want to be in the presence of God. So this presence of God is something that the Lord has actually brought us in. How did he achieve that? He actually he built a sanctuary. He actually made a sanctuary. He used his hand to actually make this sanctuary. Exodus 25 verse 8. Exodus 25 verse 8. And let them make me a sanctuary. That, that I, I may dwell among them. That I may dwell among them. So uh, there's no way that I'm going to come to them save if that sanctuary is going to be, to be erected. Mm -hmm. So these were shadows, like I said, about the true sanctuary, which is the church of the living God. So it took the Lord to do a great work yes. to build this sanctuary. And how was he going to build this sanctuary? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad because um, Stephen, the deacon, he understood these matters. And in Acts chapter 7, uh, Stephen spoke about it when he was touching about the temple of God. He says in verse number 47, But Solomon built him in a house. How, how built? Be, how yes. be the Most High dwells not in temples made with hands. Yes. And says the prophet. Yes, says says the, the prophet. prophet. Yes. Heaven is my throne. Yes. And earth is my footstool. Yes. What house will you build me? Yes. Says the Lord. Yes. Or what is the place of my rest? Yes. Has not my hand made all these things? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Yes. You do always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So you see you? now, the problem is we have people who are stiff naked, mm. we have people who are uncircumcised in the heart. When you preach the word to them like this, they remain stiff naked. They are not obedient. They resist what the Holy Spirit is saying. So the Holy Spirit was signifying uh, about the construction of the true house, which is the church of the living God, which is the New Testament church which is the new Jerusalem, which is Mount Zion, the mountain of God. So we thank God because these scriptures, they actually interpret each other. So we have seen now, God has pinned his hope in his hand. His hand is going to do this for him. So when it's now time for him to construct a sanctuary, why is God desiring to have a sanctuary among his people? His desire is so that I may dwell among them. These people, they need my presence. They cannot overcome outside my presence. So what is it that you have put or established in your sanctuary? I have placed my name there. Yes. When you go into my sanctuary, you are going to uh, meet my name. When you meet my name, you are going to be assured that you are now in my presence. And when that happens, what do you get at the end of the day? You get salvation of your soul, you get salvation. This name was established for salvation purposes. So, yes, we can all one in a in the name of Jesus. We can all shant as Zitaguti, Ubude Panamo, Andi Roma Shanti Waraka Itwa, Zitai Paraka Piwa, Raka Piwa to an Apone's way, Raka Piwa to regard him sanctuary Amar, to Mara Garapakatipewan, Maran Diru Garapakatipewan. And out is Tarakiri, Moeso, and Quapino Matambuziko. 
vaka uya kuzitara mwari vacha wana kuregererwa kwezvive to kuparidzwa kwevange ukaona munhu anokuparidzira zvimwe zvakasiyana zvatiri kuparidza izvi akutoparidza mumwe mwari asiri uyu watiri kuverenga magwaro so this is the message so it's very important the reason why i spend time to show you from the scriptures uh, and to demonstrate to you about the construction of this sanctuary is it is on account of verse number let's go back to second uh, chronicles chapter 20 and see why i have uh, spoken for a while now to talk about the sanctuary uh, it is on account of what Jehoshaphat said in verse number 8 he said and they dwelt therein yes. and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name saying so the, when the sanctuary is built this was the message when evil cometh upon, upon us, us yes the sword it may come in the form of a sword judgment it may come in the form of judgment pestilence it may come in the form of pestilence or famine it may come in the form of famine we sh- we stand before this house our instruction is to stand before this house and so, in thy presence yes before this house and in thy presence mm-hmm. for you to say stand before this house that house must be erected mm-hmm. that house must be built yes. it becomes a point of reference now those who are being overcome by evil those who are being overcome by the moabites by the ammonites and by the children of mount say what is our word to you rely there's a sanctuary which god has built he has actually incurred a cost it costed him his life for him to build that house he purchased this church not on a cheap price no he actually he purchased this church he built this church with his blood it it was at a cost church ipa yakatangwa yakatangwa neropa akatambudzika kuti church ivepo achivaka church waida kuti zvidi paivaka church zvikanzi ah waida kuisa sitara ke mom kuti zvigodi kata sangane sitara ke zvikanzi kana masangane sitara ke muona kuponeswa wese ane chikumutambudza wese ane zvikumunetsa zvine maringe neruponeso ngaende kuzitara mwari ndo pane hovapo wa mwari nokuti ndo zitara kapi wa pasvedenga vanhu ravanga poneswa naro sitara acho ndiro rati kuparidzira inonzi Jesus Christ is the doctrine concerning Christ so if you look at this uh, most of the time when Israel is faced with the people who are fighting against him they come in in bands of three the ammonites the moabites and the children of mount say why why do you describe them in bands of three you are going to see we are going to be learning the word of god as we are learning right now we are referring you those who are listening to me for the first time there's nothing that i'm going to offer you other than to stand as a prophet of god and what does this prophet do as we are going to see in second chronicles chapter 20 it is to refer people to what has been said already god has established this sanctuary among his people that work was done already the church of god was established it was established based on the suffering of christ on the cross when he died on the cross that's how he paid the price for him to establish this church so whatever message is coming now is going to refer you to that sanctuary because israel was instructed wherever you are If you are going to face whatever problem you are going to battle you are going to fight you are going to be sick there is going to be a pestilence there is going to be famine what you should do is pin your attention towards this house what should you go what should, what should you do go and stand in the sanctuary go and stand in his presence then cry to the lord in that position once you do that god is going to grant you forgiveness of sins saka ndo hondo yacho era mama mshitaura kuti kataurwa no hondo sikanzi ndo hondo yacho kana mare gerero wa kuzvitadzo hondo yakundwa ndo sikatati pa hapa hondo iyi yatikutaura nezvayo haizi yako yekurwisana naye wewe haundi wo uri kunzi urwe nechivi a a chivi haona mbonzirwa nacho chivi china akarwa nacho akatochikunda 
se akachikunda tuona ane kuti akachikunda sanctuary ndio ndio inoratidza kuti chivi chakakundwa ukaona sanctuary yavakwa kuratidza kuti chivi chakakundwa saka hondo iyi yekurwisa ane chivi reka kuzvinetsa kana kuzicheka cheka kuti ndoita seko ine ndiri munhu akashata ine ndiri munhu asinganzwisisi ndiro ndiri munhu anorama openi wakashata ah hapasi kudiwa kuzvinetsa terera iva profita ndo zvakata vana Joshua fat Kanya ya muri kunetsa na yemamo wa Bright guy. Hainetsi e go to verse 20. If you are troubled by the Moabites, the Ammonites and the children of Mount Se, go to 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20. You must believe the last part, believe in the Lord your God. Believe in the Lord your God. Yes. So shall you be established. You are going to be established. Believe his prophets. Yes. So shall he prosper. So this battle that you are trying to fight yourself, you don't need to fight on your own. Just believe his prophets yes. and you shall prosper. What are the prophets saying? What is the message of the prophets? The message of the prophets is do not be afraid. It's verse number 15 which I'm referring to. And he said, how, how can, can he, he oh, yes. Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem yes and thou king Jehoshaphat yes that says the lord unto you yes be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude yes for the battle is not yours yes. but god's so the battle is not yours but this battle belongs to the lord yes so this is what a true prophet should show you if you see a prophet saying the battle belongs to you If you see an or hear a prophet saying it is you who should do this and this for you to overcome evil that prophet is not a prophet from God mm -hmm. the true prophet from God says this battle is not yours it is God's see what should you do yourself believe believe in what the prophets are going to show you because the prophets are going to tell you the battle has been fought already Yes. The battle is won. There's a sanctuary which was built uh, at a cost and Israel or Judah is instructed to fix their attention to this um, to this sanctuary. So when you are praying towards the sanctuary, when you are preaching towards the sanctuary, when you are looking towards their the sanctuary, it is a posture of dependence on the work on the finished work of Calvary. Those who are going to preach a message which is going to be centered on Christ's finished works. That's why he said in John chapter 17, I finished the work that you have sent me to do. It's now time for me to be glorified. All the work that I was supposed to do, I finished the work. So a true preacher is going to preach a message which should give attention Everyone should have his attention to the sanctuary. Everyone should have the, his attention to the name of God. God has established his name in our midst. If we listen to a minister, to a preacher of the word of God, what direction is he uh, instructing people to look? What direction? If we look at the the way that you live your life now, most people they are struggling. I struggle with this one, I struggle with this one. If you are struggling battling with evil if you are struggling to live a holy a righteous life God never instructed the people to struggle on their own that struggle it has never been put on many kind many kind has failed to to stand up and fight against sin many kind have failed hakuna akazvigona iwo hongatangi nazo zvakakundikana kubva pamazwa Adam vanhu vachikundikana nechi vakutanga nhasi kunzi pando vakunyengetera pando vakutsanya pando vakuitwa zvakati pando kuti uverenge bible rese uri pedze pando kuti uside pando kuti visage pando kuti visage that message is coming from the devil that prophet is not a prophet of god the true prophet of god he assures people as far as the ammonites the moabites and those of the children of say is concerned pin your attention towards the sanctuary if you want to to see where they are going to be victorious listen at the 
message that you are listening to? Is it directing you to where the name of God is? Do you know what the name of the Lord is? Are you standing in his presence? So how come that you are in his presence, but yet you are succumbing, you are being defeated? What is happening? So the prophets should emphasize. So the reason why I showed you earlier on that you are going to read the scriptures where Jehoshaphat was afraid himself. And as I have shown you, or as I have highlighted, that Jehoshaphat was the type of Christ, you are going to see, so Christ is also afraid of the Moabites and the Ammonites and the children of Seth. It's not true. That's why I said, though it's a shadow of good things to come, but it's not a perfect image. It's not a perfect image. Inasmuch as these Old Testament people and prophets, they were used by God to bring out this drama. They are areas where they have exhibited themselves failures because they cannot act the drama of Christ to perfection. Only Christ was going to come and accomplish this work in a perfect way. So, we, 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 we are in the land, we are in the New Testament, mm -hmm. but the children of, of Moab, they continue to come. Yes. That's mm -hmm. where most people get... Uh, Discouraged. Mm -hmm. Testament. So what are they coming? What is evil coming to do to dispossess you from the inheritance? If you go to the book of Galatians, Apostle Paul was very clear. Um, let's go to the book of Galatians chapter 5 and, and hear the words of Apostle Paul when he was talking about this issue of inheritance. He was very clear. Uh, I like the, way, the part where he, he emphasized uh, Galatians chapter 5 um oh yeah, you can start to read from verse number 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. So these are the works of the flesh. Adultery. Adultery. Fornication. Fornication. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Yes. Idolatry. Yes. Witchcraft. Yes. Hatred. Yes. Variance. Yes. Emulations. Yes. Wrath, yes. Strife, yes. Seditions, yes. Heresies, yes. Envies, yes. Murders, yes. Drunkenness, yes. Revelings, yes. And such like. The list is endless. You can you can put on other things and such like. Why are you saying this? Why are you telling the church to put away all these things? Of the which I tell you before. I have told you before about these things. As I have told, also told you in time past. I have also told you on several occasions. That they which do such things shall yeah. not inherit the kingdom of God. They shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The reason why I read this scripture, I wanted you to see how, what Jehoshaphat said. Jehoshaphat said, the reason why they are come, they want to dispossess us mm -hmm. uh, from, from the inheritance which the Lord has given us. Where is this inheritance? This inheritance, eternal life, is the inheritance. But where is it? Where are we obtaining? Where are we enjoying? Where are we partaking of this inheritance? In the kingdom of God, in the New Testament. Because whenever we hear the word of God, whenever we hear the message concerning Christ, remember, Christ is the life. He is the life. And in John 17, he was very, he was very bold on verse number 3. He says, this is internal life, so that they may know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So when we teach you this message, when we teach you this gospel, we are actually imparting eternal life unto you. Where is this internal, eternal life found? In the kingdom of God. But those things who do such things, I have told you before, and I continue to tell you, they are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. They are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. So, 
This is what um, Apostle John also highlighted in First John chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. Love not the world and the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What are in the world? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So if you are going to be found with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, remember those three bands that I've mentioned, uh, the, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the uh, children of Mount Se. They, they walk in threes. They are going to... Uh, cast us out or away from the inheritance, which is the reason why we are here. If we are not going to find the inheritance, then why are we here? What are we doing? We are spending, we are wasting time. We are wasting time. So, I want that scripture where he was talking about, it's verse 11. Behold, I say, how Behold, they... Behold, I say, yes. how they reward us. Yes. To come to cast us out of thy possession, yes. which thou hast given us to inherit. So we have, we have been given a possession to inherit. Mm. But this evil, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and those of the children of Seth, they have come to reward us. But they want to reward us in a negative direction now. What we are going to get is, we are going to end up with the wrath of God. And we are going to uh, fail to possess or to inherit the kingdom of God. Apostle Rapora can do it all right. He's in the Andrew Tarapano is. The Garambas, you could tumble the eyes, guys. The Gambos River, as no tower of foot. Vanita Mabasaka die. Avascus Oana, Naka, Yoshi, Omar. Eh? Sagatuita say, Wow, we are Amori. Wow, we are Amon, Amon. Wow, we are Vanako Manaway, Kumakomo, I say. Twitter say now, Uskanzina Jehoshaphat, this is the time to be reminded of the sanctuary. This is the time to be reminded of the sanctuary. It is only by hearkening to the words that the Lord has said uh, from, the from the sanctuary's perspective where your victory is going to be, to be guaranteed. Do pachato wea kupones kwa kwenyu kana mazin zwisai zosho. If you go to the book of Ephesians chapter 5, uh, Ephesians chapter 5, uh, yeah, verse number, um, yeah, from verse number 1, be therefore followers of God. Be therefore followers of God. Yes. As dear children. Yes. And walk in love. Yes. As Christ also has loved us. Yes. And hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Yes. For a sweet smelling savor. You say now we should walk in love. Yes. But fornication, fornication and all uncleanness yes. and all oracoviciousness, yes. let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Ngazireke kushita urwa pamsoro penyu sekuti mawawa chene makashambiz kwa na kristu kristu waka zipa nukuda kwa ke zinu izu. Ngazireke kushita urwa pamsoro penyu. Let all these things not be mentioned. Yes. Neither filthiness. Yes. Nor foolish talking. Foolish talking. Nor jesting. Yes. Which are not convenient. Yes. But rather giving of thanks. What we should hear from your mouth every time when you open your mouth, we should hear giving of thanks. And why, are, why should we always give thanks? Because of the sanctuary. Yes. There is a work which was done already. Which means whatever is happening in our lives now, the reference is the work that has been done already. We are being referred to that house which the Lord has built with his own hands. The church which he has purchased with his own blood. And here on Ephesians chapter 5 is saying, Remember that Christ loved us and has given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Mm -hmm. Which means on account of Christ having loved us, and given his life for us. We have a life 
that is expected for us to live, which is sweet-smelling savor before God. We should live a life which when God looks at, he is pleased. No more in fornication, no more in adultery. We have a possession that we should possess. We have an inheritance that belongs to us. But look at the children of Seth. Of a man said they, they continue to come. And remember what Esau is known for. The love of the things of the flesh. Yes. yes. Yeah? That, those things which are pleasing to the eyes. Mm -hmm. That is what Esau is known for. Whenever you see the children from Mount Isai, you are reminded of Esau, their father. Murumo zakatsukira. Muruma anu anu asina hanya na mngari. Let let there be no a fornicator and a man who is evil. Just like what so what Esau was, he did not have any regard to the things of God. He concentrated on what is pleasing to the flesh at that particular time. When you see the desire for the things of the flesh against the instruction of God coming into your life, know that the children from Mount Say have visited you. What is this coming to do? What is he coming to achieve? To dispossess you, to cast you out of that possession. If you are cast out of the possession now, it means you are no longer in the presence of the Lord. Because the presence of the Lord is where his name is. And where his name is, is where the words of the Lord are. Yes. You must keep these words because you belong to God. God has loved you. So we should no longer give ourselves to filthiness nor foolish talking. Uh, I have discovered now of late that if we have a place where people are indulging in foolish talk, it is in Ziegland. I don't know why. Many people, if you are going to take their phones and open and, and just uh, browse through what they, 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 they spend their time on, you will you, be shocked. And these things, they, are, they should not be named uh, in us. So there should be neither filthiness, there should be neither foolish talking, nor jesting, <laughs> a lot of jesting where people, they do such things as you, you, you will be shocked to hear that people who have believed the word of God, this is the manner of life in which they are living. I don't know, brethren, what is giving you this complacency. We are in this, in, in this land. The Lord has dispossessed the inhabitants. We used to be in that land. We used to live a sinful life. The Ammonites, the Moabites, the children of Se used to occupy this land. But God dispossessed this, these inhabitants for us to inherit. We should now live as children of God. Why do we still have filthiness, foolish talk, jesting, which are not convenient, hmm? but rather giving of thanks? Why? For this you know. Yes. That no homonger. So Apostle Paul is assuming that you have this knowledge. The reason why we are saying these things should not be named in your midst or in your lives, it is we assume by now you know. For this you know that there is no homonger. Yes. No unclean person. There is no unclean person. No covetous man. There is no covetous man. Who is an idolater. There is no idolater. Is any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So this is the message that he consistently shared. To the, to the believers, hoping by this time that you know this. Why do you continue in homonging? Why do you continue in uncleanness? Mm -hmm. Why do you continue in covetousness? Is it because the Ammonites, they are too mighty for you? Is it because the Moabites, they are too strong for you? Is it because the, the, the children of, of Mount Se they are still strong for you? 
If that is your response, you say, Pastor Baloy, the, these are mighty. This is what Jehoshaphat said. Remember the testimony of Jehoshaphat. When he saw these people, he says, you must judge them on verse number 12. Oh, Oh, our God, yes. would thou not judge them? Yes. For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon you. So our only hope is we are going to fix our eyes on the Lord. Where is the Lord? He is in the sanctuary yes. where he's established his name. Yes. But when we look at this great company, without the Lord judging them, how is the Lord going to judge them? He's going to judge them through the word, mm -hmm. through the, the, the gospel that is preached. Mm -hmm. Whenever a message is coming, it's judgment to the Ammonites, mm -hmm. judgment to the Moabites, mm -hmm. judgment to the children of Mount Se. Mm -hmm. They should be judged. And when we are judging, we condemn. When we are judging, we oppose. When we are judging, you are giving an ultimatum. Mm -hmm. That's what the gospel comes to do. When those instructions are coming, the Ziklag Sound Advice 12 and other instructions, they are coming to judge uncleanness. They are coming to condemn filthiness among us. Let there be no uncleanness and filthiness, jesting and so forth. Why should you take pleasure in these things? Don't you know that those who do such things are not going to inherit the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ, and of God. I'm going to say, Saka by now, I found God, you know, for Angus, I was the canoe. But what we get now is verse number 12 is giving us the reason why we are still struggling. Mm -hmm. This is a great Kamban. Don't underestimate the Moabites and the Ammonites and the, the children from Mount. Say, no, don't, don't underestimate them. Don't underestimate them. Those of Mount say, don't underestimate them. Don't think that you can handle them on your own. What you require, what you need, is for God himself to judge them. You need a message which is going to come from God to condemn and to judge them. And what should you do yourself? You should put your eyes, put your attention on the Lord. Fix your attention to the sanctuary, to where the name of the Lord has been established. This is the message. Otherwise, we shall roll our sanctuary repo. Kunawan or Kuro or sanctuary repo cannot temper the Avaqua. Vachiramba Kutarira Kutembe. Here, Maragat are Kanoka Zoyan Zara, a mere chichawia Kamut, Solomon as Nengate. In Zara ere, Kuchaya Denda ere, Kuchaya Zil Hondo ere, I just do to Kuchawiachi. A mimi in Daimono. Wana Rusunungu Korwenu, Makatarisa Patembe, Yakavakwa. Kuruak to Basaraka to Kudar, Chakuja or Kurover, Waiwe, Kuramba, Kutarisa, Pasangshwar, cannot Sangshwar. Ducha or Kurover, Waiju. As long as you are out of the presence of the Lord, you cannot stand against this great company. It's a great company by virtue of you do not have capacity to fight or to wrestle against evil. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You do not match them mm -hmm. on your own. There's no amount of prayer which is going to uh, actually deliver you from this. What you need to do now is to fix your attention on the sanctuary. This is what you should do. This is what you should do. So, it's, it's very, very evident in the scriptures, very evident that what we need to rely on, we need to rely on the word of God. And if you go to the book of Romans chapter 8, if you go to the book of Romans chapter 8, I just want to read a few scriptures there. Um, verse number 4, what does it say? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So many people, they do not understand that what the law sought to achieve, it was righteousness. So there is righteousness which the law endeavored to, to achieve. 
e, saka wajinji kana tichipari za kururama tichivura kufama magwara kwa testament wama anot a maku tijosira kumura hilo tiliku kurati za kutumura hilo waitari sila kutikuwe ni kururama as iwa ura kukupanisa anditika saka kana mura hilo kitu watu wanawe ni kururama tu kurati za uchaya wawari wani mura hilo kururama doja wae wawari na saka pakanyo wama vesa haya aliku odi testament Ai wawari la kutisitu kwa na kurura. Watu mati tuwezi la kumura hiru. No. I am not returning you back to the law. I am showing you what the law desired to achieve. The law of Moses desired to attain righteousness. The question is, did it attain the righteousness? The answer is no. Why? Because of his weaknesses. So, where are we going to get the perfect sacrifice? Apostle Paul has already answered in Ephesians chapter 5 when he showed us the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ which was accepted by God. So now, on account of this gospel which is centered on Christ that we are preaching, we expect you now to, to live a righteous life which the Lord desired, but it failed on account of his weaknesses. So in Matthew chapter 23, verse 23, uh, he, the, 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 the Lord says to the Pharisees, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin. Mm. And have omitted the weightier matters of the law. What are the ma weightier matters of the law? Judgment. Judgment. Mercy. Yes. And faith. And faith. These ought ye to have done. Yes. And not to leave the other undone. You see now, so he's talking about the weightier matters of the law. And here in Romans chapter 8, we are hearing about the righteousness, uh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled. Way, not fulfilled in the scriptures. No, that's not, that's not what the scripture said. The righteousness of the law, or the reason why, maybe I'm tempted to go back to verse number 3, so that we may hear why, uh, why we are out in verse number 4. Uh, it is on account of the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. It is on account of the price which was paid for the construction of the sanctuary. Yes. For what the law could not do. The law failed to do. In that it was weak through the flesh. The, the law was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son. So what God decided to do, he sent his own son. In the likeness of sinful flesh. He sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin. Yes. Condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned sin in the flesh. So the reason why God sent his son in the likeness of a sinful flesh. He wanted to condemn sin in the flesh. This is judgment now. That's why Jehoshaphat said, Oh Lord, judge. Can't we judge the, them? They need to be judged, these ones. Otherwise, without judging them, I cannot stand against this great company. Yeah. So, on account of sin being condemned uh, in, on the cross by Christ, verse number four, what should happen now that sin was condemned? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. So, the righteousness of the law is going to be fulfilled not in another person, in you. You must not put the word us there, because lest you be deceived. Put the word me, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in me. Why? In me who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Those are going to give me up. The, 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 the statement that continues after the comma is the reason why you don't want to put me there. Because you know very well that you walk after the flesh mm. and you do not walk after the spirit. So when the scripture says walk after the spirit, he was pointing us to when we walk after the spirit, whatever the spirit of God is going to instruct us to do on account of the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, we now have Holy Spirit in us. The ministers are coming as prophets to show us the work that was done already. So, what is expected of God now is the righteousness which the law endeavored to achieve. It must be fulfilled in me. It must be fulfilled in us. Who are we? Those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
Saka yo haufu wakada kisa mi papu. Haudu kuzisa ipapo nukuti. Haudu ku, haudu ku, haudu ku famba wa chitera sukutawarwa ni mwia. Unura kutera sukutawarwa ni nyamu. So, this is where the righteousness of the Lord must, must be fulfilled. So, he, he, went to, he went on to elaborate verse number five. For they that are after the flesh yes. do mind the things of the flesh. So, those who are walking after the flesh, they mind the things of the flesh. So, minding the things of the flesh, is, it is that uh, uh, description which I gave you of the children of Mount Se. Or the children of Se, of Se, the 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 Edomites, the Edomites, they mind the things of the flesh. They do, they disregard the word of God on account of convenience to the flesh. They want an immediate uh, solution to their desires, irregardless of the instruction of God. Kanawachita chino, awato mbozi tagi kutishokurama arino tukudi. Valu tuwa gaudi nyama yawe ino dei, nyama yawe ino fazi kwa nei. Fumbwa zawe zino fazi kwa nei. Vanura la masina hanya na mngari. They say as long as I enjoy, as long as it's comfortable with me, as long as I'm enjoying life, that's their slogan which they are now doing in the world. Enjoy life. Mm. If you go on social media and you see those people who are in gay practices, all those filthy things, if you look at the comments which people say, most of the comments who comment after when others are trying to rebuke them, they will say, leave them alone. Enjoy your life. Don't mind what people are saying. Do what, 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 what is pleasing to you with your body. Those are the Edomites. They don't mind the instructions of God. They don't mind the word of God. But look at what is happening now. The children of say they are right with you. They've dispossessed you of the possession which the Lord has given you. He goes, no good to him, no more, so I know you know, no shout it to my town, the man, no more, you are. Second, do my tower, and the man, no more, and do my finger, and the man, no more, I know you know, you can't believe you do not, you no longer have confidence <laughs> that you, you have the spirit of God inside of you. Yet, if you read further, uh, in, in Romans chapter 8 and go to, um, to verse number 16 it says the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit yes. that we are the children of the God the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God but when you mind now the things of the flesh you end up your spirit now <laughs> no longer a bearing witness that you are a child of God. You, you, you doubt. You doubt. If you are asked, are you a child of God? You, you are hesitant to, to reply. Because your mind is very filthy. The life that you are living is very filthy. You do not see yourself overcoming the Ammonites and the Moabites and um, uh, those of Seh. Saka, mwea omari, ni mwea waku. Zine kaku kaka wazana, asikia pupurani. Nukuti. Pane pa kusa wirala, karuki shika wati. Niri umana omari, mwea omari, aruku pupurani mwea wako yo, kutiwuru umana omari, siruki itika mpenye wako yo soso. Kala kutimune makaka tanwa, ya kuti niri umana wasati ya ni maa. Ha, asindi kuti niri umana omari. Pari kwa kanzi, wana omari wano taza, mina imbo nore urura. Haa. It's not about Kure Aurora. It's not about Kure Aurora. It is about standing firm in the sanctuary, in the presence of God, where his name was established. Mm -hmm. On account of his word, that's where victory is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. So the spirit of God, it should bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And why is it important for you to have this witness that you are a child of God, verse 17. And if children... If you are a child of God... Then is... You are going to have an inheritance. Heirs of God. Yes. And joint heirs with Christ. Yes. If so be that we suffer with him... Yes. That we may be also glorified together. So what should we do? 
therefore, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time yes. are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So he went on to talk about the earnest expectation where our mother had uh, already revealed it unto us that the creature, uh, the sons of God, they should be manifested. So when this John series came, when the Ziklag sound advice came, it sought to manifest the sons of God. Yes. Yes. Where is the manifestation of the sons of God? Who are the sons of God? Those who are led by the Spirit of God. Who are those who are led by the Spirit of God? Those who mind the things of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Those who obey the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Those who stand in the sanctuary and obey the instructions that are given in the Word of God, in the sanctuary, in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So, where, where and when are they going to be manifested? If you listen to the conversation that you do, is there confirmation that you are a child of God? Why are you still living in filthiness? We thought by now you were delivered from that filthy life and you are translated into this kingdom where you rely and depend on the victory that was already given you on account of the suffering of Christ. Yes. So, when we talked about the praise now, which Jehoshaphat was instructing, early in the morning, the children of Judah, they were instructed that uh, once it's early in the morning, once it's early in the morning, very important timing of where we are going to sing, it is early in the morning. So tomorrow, he was talking about uh, something which was going to be futuristic. And when the Bible is talking about tomorrow in the Old Testament, it is not talking about tomorrow as in the dead. It was a prophecy which was talking about those who have now entered into the New Testament. It's a tomorrow to them. So early in the morning, that's where it happened. That's when, in verse number 20, and they arose early in the morning and went forth into, into the, the wilderness. wilderness of Tekoa. Yes. And as they went forth, yes. Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, yes. and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Yes. Believe in the Lord your God, yes. so shall he be established. Yes. Believe in his prophets, yes. so shall he prosper. So from verse 21, we saw there the people being put in order. It was now time to praise. So what do we see? We see Jehoshaphat referring people to the sanctuary, to the dwelling place of God. But at the same time, we also hear about the prophet who rose, a prophet who arose in their midst and spoke to them. And Jehoshaphat now standing with the people on the morrow, in the early uh, hours of the day, in the morning. And why in the morning? The morning marks the beginning of, the, of a day. It marks a dispensation. It marks uh, the coming in of a new era. Mwaka mtsa, makuseni seni kucheza, vanu, waka muka washinda mpata, wete koa, washinda kunurumbiza. Waenda kunurumbiza. Waka nzingawa imbe, vanu ngawa imbe, wapirisita waka tunga mira nziyo, vanu waka imba. Washimba kudaro, Zino nzi, kwa kaiti kakisuo nekwi, kumamua bae sinema amonaiz, ni wana kumana wase. Chicha kaiti kakikoko, chakaiti kakikoko nchoo kutu waka tanga ungu, kwa katanga kubayanu wa bayanu wa ikoko. He? Yes. Pachezo hao, waka kuwa zana pachezo hao. So kuti Israel, they do not even know what exactly happened. This was being reported now after eh, everything has been done. But during this time, when, while they were singing, while they were singing, they started to be seen in, in, in the camps 
of uh, the Ammonites and the Moabites and uh, those of Mount uh, destruction. So I want you to read uh, Brother Mary, uh, verse number 21 to, um, to 24. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were gone against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. You see now, <clears throat> so this is what they witnessed. Mm. They saw the dead bodies. But as to what happened, they were now re re receiving reported a uh, speech, yes. a reported uh, message that this is what happened. The, uh, and one helped another to destroy each other. They helped each other to destroy each other. Mm. And there was no participation of Israel. All what Israel did was to praise. So this is why people, most people in the shrines, they say there is power in praise. Yes. When they say let us praise, they want your enemies to fall down. They say the walls of Jericho fell. When people stood, let us dance, let us sing. So they have their walls of Jericho in their minds. They have their Ammonites and their Moabites in, them, in their minds. And they want to sing to the Lord so that the poverty may be destroyed, the, so that all these unemployment, sicknesses, and so forth, they may be destroyed. But what we are talking about here, why God directed his sanctuary, it was for the salvation of his people. And once we live as saints, once we live, we live as people who are saved from the Lord, that is the victory that we are talking about. So I want you to see when Israel was now praising, when Israel was now praising, when Judah was now praising, the songs that they were singing, they were based on the utterances of the prophet. Remember, all Judah was stuck. They had already given up. They had already seen themselves, their little children, their wives, and their children being vulnerable and weak until a prophet arose. When the prophet arose, he's the one who uh, was given the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord came upon him and he spoke to the children of Israel. So what Jehoshaphat said and what the prophet came to strengthen the people of Israel was that this war does not belong to you. It does not belong to you. This is God's battle. Leave it in his hands. What should you do yourself? Stand in that place. You said when evil come, let, you must stand in that place in the presence of the Lord. That was the message. So I want you to see now that when we say there's power in praise, we are not talking about words, good words, strong Shona words or Devela words to encourage or to motivate God so that he does things for us. No. The, 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 the songs that Judah sang in the Valley of Tekoa, they were in response to what the prophet had said. So the lyrics of the, of the songs are not, are not written, but what we know is Jehoshaphat and his people, they were thanking God, number one, God has driven his people, has driven the inhabitants of this land away and has established a possession for his people to inherit. What a, what a powerful uh, line of, of music. What a powerful line of music. We acknowledge that God, you have established your sanctuary where you dwell among people. You want to save them. 
And what did you do? You, dra- you drove away the children of, the, of, of this land and you gave us this land for a possession. Huh? After giving us this land for a possession, you have established this sanctuary that even when they come now to dispossess us out of this position, we are going to look upon your house and when we cry, you are going to forgive us again. Yes. When we acknowledge the work that God has done with his hand, the work that Christ has done for us on the cross, the suffering that he went through for our sins, when we believe that message and when we sing with understanding, that is what brings victory now. We see the destruction of the Ammonites, the, 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 the children of Mount, from Mount Se and the, and the Moabites. So these songs were not just mere song. It was a testimony on its own on account of what the Lord had done. So Jehoshaphat and the prophets, they were pointing the Judah people, people of Judah, to what the Lord had already accomplished. Makaisa zita renyu mnzimboi. Iko nota kungo kunda, nota kwe zita renyu la maka, la maka isa mnzimboi. Saka tino imba tichitenda mwari, nota kwe zita rake. Iya kawaya kati, ah, ndakarati za wano maka ndipa zita renyu. Raka ngari renyu ndika warati za hiru. Saka zita raka waya na rui zita rababa waki. Zika nza, ah, mashoko, andakata ora kwa wari. Taka wata ora mashoko, ese, ah, maka ndituma na hoti ndi wata ori. Waka atenda mashoko yu wayo, waka agamishiri. Ndiyo pane kukunda kwao, pakutenda mashoko, andaka taura kwa wari. The words that I spoke to them, the fact that they have kept these words, that is where their victory is. So these were the contents of the song. So when Jehoshaphat and these people, they were singing. You cannot say today, when you are in trouble, you say, I want to go and sing. The Lord is not interested in what you are going to say. It is not about what you are singing in the song. It is about your understanding. So in verse number 21, he says, you, uh, you should praise the beauty of holiness. Mm-hmm. It's what the Bible is describing as the beauty of holiness. It's describing about our glorified Christ. He is the beauty of, of, of holiness. The express image of God. So when we praise Christ, on account of what he did for us, we are acknowledging his mission here on earth. And they went before the army and they said, praise the Lord for his mercy and joy it forever. It's about, it's about mercy. One may stand up and say, the mercy of the Lord and joy it forever. That's what we used to do in shrines. But when we said the, his mercy and joy it forever, lifting up our hands like this, during that time, we were paying tithe. And by paying tithe, you are saying, you want to work your own righteousness. You want to work your own works of the law so that you attain righteousness. In that case now, you cancel mercy. Because once you work yourself, it is no longer of works. It is now uh, being accounted to you. It's no longer of grace but it's now of your own works. So what people call praise, what we are calling praise in this, way, in, this, in this context, these are not words that you are saying to the Lord. This is a life that you are living on account of the work that Christ has already, what? Has already accomplished. So when you sing now, you are not like someone who has just been put words in his mouth. You are singing from what you have experienced, what you have uh, actually um, understood. So in Psalm 47, uh, I like this psalm because there the Lord was showing us in what way should we praise him. Verse 6 and 7. Verse 6 and 7, Psalm 47. Sing praises to God. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Yes. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. How many times did he use the phrase sing praises? One, two, three, four. Four times. Sing praises to God. 
Sing praises. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises. Verse 7. For God is the king of... No, verse 7. Psalm 47, verse 7. Yes, continue. Yes, For God correct. is the king of all the earth. Why should we sing praises? Because God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. So, God is not a, interested in you just singing. Sing your praises with understanding. What it means is what God is calling praise there is understanding. He responds or he reacts to understanding, yes. not to the words. Mm. So if you sing without understanding, you may have a very, very good voice, but if you mm. do not have understanding, mm. you are not praising the Lord. Yes. True praise is when we express what the King has done for us out of understanding. We now understand what God did to us through his son. So those who have an understanding of what God did in our lives, when we now have understanding, Katawa ni kunzi kuisisa hiko uko. Tatanga manje kurumbiza. Iyo yo ndo rumbizo, iyo yo. Ino ita kutiva amoni. Newa amoni. Newa na wase. Yukuma kumwa yo ese. Waka anzi kwa. Rumbizo iyo yo. Awa miri. Awa mbo miri. Awa mbo ziguri. Swa wafa mba say. Kutuwa parara say. You can't even know. It happens early in the morning. In the New Testament. Once the New Testament dispensation is launched, we see praises coming. What are people praising about or concerning? They are acknowledging the work which the Lord has done. God is now in our midst. What? What happened? Can God dwell on earth? Tell me, what happened? Can God dwell on earth? No, 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 my friend. God has built a sanctuary for himself. He wanted to dwell among his people. What is this sanctuary that you are talking about? It is the New Testament. People now have the Spirit of God inside of them. Don't tell me. So what, what, what is God doing there? God has established his name in the sanctuary. It is on account of this name that as far as salvation is concerned, everything is put under or in this name. Chicha wali kunezi kana nacho ama yangu. Andi zicha wali kunezi kana nacho. Kana zineche kuita nerupo neso. Kana zineche kuita nekutambu zika nechivi. Kana zineche kuita nekutambu zika nekuchiva. Kana zineche kuita nekutambu zika nekuzikuza. Chichi liku kutambu za. Wondo yoyo kuru wane chivi ya watangai. Haizi yako. Kana pana haka kupari zira kutipano. Zawono kwa nasa kuita. Kutukunde nechivi. Haka kunye pea. The true message is. That battle belongs to the Lord. What you are required to do is stand firm. Stand firm in the gospel. Let's go to Psalm 150, verse 1 to 6. Let's talk a little bit about this praise. It is on account of this praise that we are going to be victorious. We need understanding on whatever we are doing. Psalms 150, verse 1 to 6. Praise ye the Lord. Yes. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. You must praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for he is for, praise him for his mighty acts. You must praise God for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his exceeding greatness. His pra excellent. Praise greatness. him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. You can use the trumpet to praise him. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Yes. Praise him with the timbrel. You and can dance. play timbrel and dance. Praise him with string with stringed instruments and organs. You can praise him with the guitars and so forth. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Yes. Praise him upon the high sound cymbals. Yes. Let everything that hath breath Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise ye the Lord. So, 
Chimwene chimwe chine breath. <laughs> Let everything that yet breath praise the Lord. Mm. This is an invitation, not to everyone. When he talks about the breath, he's talking about the breath of life. Yes. He's talking yes. about us who have uh, the breath of God, who are alive in the Lord. So everyone who is alive, everyone who is the breath of the Lord, you must praise him. You must understand his mighty, way, mighty acts. So when you are praising him, you are responding to the mighty acts of the Lord. You understand them. On the basis of your understanding, we can now say we are praising the Lord. If we are going to have a choir of skist people or choristers, and those skist people, they do not have an understanding of what the Lord has done. They do not have any, uh, any understanding whatsoever. But they are willing to sing. They have very good voices. You can enjoy the, the quality of music they sing. If you go into the world, so many people, some who are called great musicians, some they are now being called a uh, psalmist. They sing very melodiously. They play instruments very well. But when you listen to the contents of their songs, there is lack of understanding. That is not praise at all. And you are not going to have any victory whatsoever. We are not talking about voices here. We are talking about understanding. So true praise is when people have understanding. Don't talk about what uh, Paul and Silas were doing when they were singing. Now when you get into trouble, you say, Paul and Silas were in prison, and they sang hymns and praises, and the Lord opened the, the prison. When Paul and Silas were singing in Acts chapter 16, they didn't know that the, the prison gates were going to be opened. They were responding to the word which they had believed, to the works which the Lord had done. They didn't regard that they were in an, in, in an inconvenient place. They responded to the word. On account of understanding, we are in jail, now we are in prison, but it is our flesh which, which is in chains. Our spirits they are not in chains. The Lord has saved us. The Lord has delivered us from the, the world. We are now in the New Testament. We are now children of God. We are now saints. Our sins are forgiven. Our trust and hope is not in men, but our trust and hope is in the word. When you have that understanding, that is praise now for you. And if you have such praise, even if you look at it, if we are going to do that out of understanding, and let's say, let's stand up all of us and let's sing this song to express what the Lord has done. You can see, you can, you can, you can see that it becomes a, a, a very, very a sweet smelling savor in the, in the eyes of God because we are having the understanding. We are having the understanding. So Jehoshaphat instructed the people, let's go. But how are we going to, to confront? You said this battle is not ours. So why are we going? Why are we going? We are coming from a high altitude. If you read Isaiah chapter 2 and Micah chapter 4, you are going to see that Mount Zion was actually built on top of other hills and mountains. Mount Zion, is, it, it, it is at a higher altitude. That's why he said, now you can go down and fight with them. You are coming from a high position. We spoke at length about this when you talked about the, the castles. But if we go to Ephesians chapter, chapter number 3, it says from verse 1, if, then, if, he, if he then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. So when were we elevated? When were we elevated? We were elevated the day we rose together with Christ. That's the day when we were put on a high altitude place. This is what Romans chapter 6 says. It says, when he was talking about baptism, from chapter 6, 
uh, Romans chapter 6 from verse number 1. But we're not going to read from verse number 1. We just want verse number 4 and 5. What does he say? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. So before we got to a higher place, we had to go down. So when we believed the word of God, the message of Christ, we then went for baptism. And that baptism, it symbolizes a, a burial. So we're buried uh, together with him by baptism, yes. Death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of yes. the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So when we now walk in the newness of life, it is now talking about the resurrection that we've, we've, we've attained. So on account of this word, we were dead, mm -hmm. and then we were buried uh, uh, together with him by baptism into death. But as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we are now walking in the newness of life. So this is the day when you heard this message and you responded to the message and you went for baptism. You were baptized into water and you received the promise of the Father, which is Holy Spirit. That day you were placed on a higher altitude. Saka, so let's finish Colossians chapter 3. I just wanted to highlight in what way, what advantage do we have now? The advantage of a sin that we have when we go, to, when we go down to fight the Ammonites and the Moabites and those of the children of say, the advantage we have is we are now risen with Christ. That's our advantage. Because of that resurrection, we are now seated with Christ. Where are we seated? Yes. If ye then be risen with Christ, yes. seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Verse number two. Set your affection on the things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. You see now. So we should set our affection now on things above. But on account of the resurrection, this is the advantage which we now have. Yes. We are not facing sin on our own. We are risen together with Christ. How did it happen when we believe the word of God? Yes. So we are not coming from a lower position to go up to fight the Ammonites and the Moabites. No, we are coming now from a high position. That's why we said on this stage, what is expected of us is we should conquer. We should conquer. So if you go on with Ephesians chapter 3, it talks about mortify therefore, verse number 5, the members which are upon the earth. Mortify therefore your yes. members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. Okay, wait there. So the reason why we say we are expected now to live a victorious life, it is on account of the resurrection. We are coming from a high altitude. So this is the message. So it is expected of us, brethren, not on account of your effort, but on account of the gospel that is preached in the New Testament, it is expected for us to live a victorious life. So this is the praise that I was talking about, the power of the praise. It is actually a testimony concerning what Christ has done. You do not have power. There is no power in what we say with our mouths. There is no power in that. There is power in the Lord. There is power in what the Lord has accomplished for us when we have that understanding. So the reason why we come to these services is so that we have understanding. So when we have understanding now, if we say let's dance now, with that understanding, that dance or that, that uh, form of, that piece of music, 
it becomes a sweet smelling savor before the Lord. And you are going to see the victory of the Lord. Is the root and a marinus, a kaita car, one more bear by an hour. Fume Manguana Maxen, Cogging down one of me to be a cat, 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 cat. Then it was now time to take the treasures. So many things. It took people three days to gather the possessions. Three days of gathering the possessions. And this is what we are doing. This is what we are doing. So if you are poor, you should know that uh, your riches, they are there on the Moabites and the Ammonites. Once the Moabites are killed, you are going to take a great possession. So we continue to be enriched by the word of God. So the New Testament is a continuous improvement uh, uh, place. New Testament New Testament in Zimbo Yokumova from one level of glory to the other. So when the Bible is talking about glory, it is talking about that life which reflects on what the Lord has done for us. So this is what he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Um, Verse number 18, he says, But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So the New Testament is a place where you should uh, continue to be changed. I like, I want media team to highlight the, the, the two words, are changed. We are changed. So we continue to be changed. So change is a continuous, is a continuous process. We continue to be changed. From glory to glory. This year we should not graduate from bed to waste. In the New Testament, on account of the glory that we are beholding, we should graduate from one level of glory to the other, which is a continuous improvement. So this is the message I want to hear from Brethren Mary. And were you blessed by the message? Ah, indeed, Pastor, the message is a total blessing. What I've understood in a nutshell is um, this life that we have to live in Christ being a life of praise. We should be praising all the time. And how do we praise all the time? We praise all the time by doing the whole form of doctrine that he has given us. So in other words, the life of praise is a lifestyle. There is no time you can say I'm living this life outside the instructions or the full, the whole commandments of God and then you say you are praising. It is a lifestyle. It is what we do every time that we are instructed by God in his word. So I've come to understand that, you know, like in the old times when we were in the shrines, we would think that when we say let's stand up and praise God, it is what you are doing at that particular time or your actions. But today I've really understood that it is what you live inside you, in your spirit. When we live the whole form of the doctrine, I've been so blessed. Now I understand that a way of praise or a life of praise is just doing the whole form of the doctrine. And when we are doing it, we'll be praising the Lord all the time. And one thing that really hit my spirit in this sermon was, is coming from verse number 25 of Second Chronicles chapter 20. The last part of that scripture, it says, And there were three days in gathering of the spoil. Gathering of the spoil, brethren, that the enemy was, was withholding from them. Three days gathering of the spoil. 
And the last part says, it was so much, I was so touched and I was moved in my spirit. How much of our possessions, brethren, are we living with the enemy by just not living the whole doctrine of Christ, by just not observing or obeying the whole doctrine of Christ? Brethren, so many things we complain about in this life, but I've come to understand that the things that we do not have are wholly or totally blamed on us for not having them. Our Father has so much loved us and he has given us all things pertaining even to this life and the life to come. I was so blessed, Pastor. Thank you for this opportunity. Yes, Brother Mary, I'm reminded of um, Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. He was talking about those who are going to overcome uh, the, 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 the devil. Verse, verse number 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb yes. and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. You see now, so this song that we are talking about, <clears throat> it is actually a, a testimony, but it, it seems as if, if you look at that scripture, the blood of the lamb is on the other side, the word of the testimony on the other side. It's like the blood of the lamb uh, doing its own part, and then the word of their testimony doing, doing uh, its own part. It's not true. The word of their testimony is based on the, uh, on the blood of the lamb, which means whatever they were testifying, it was on account of what the lamb has actually done for them. They were praising God for what the lamb they have overcome. The victory is on the blood of the lamb, which is the blood which was used to construct that sanctuary that we are talking about. So when they testify now, they are testifying on account of what the lamb has already done for them. Second, your song, Yachu, Dorumbi, Yachu, Tinegeti Shimba, Tinegeti Shimba, Zagwayana, Rakabaiwa, Nuda Kwezi Vizuelu. Saka kana ta, ta wani testimony yoyo, uh, victory mm -hmm. Then uh, there's another last scripture, the first John chapter 5, um, starting from verse 18. Yes, he says, We know that whoever, whosoever, we know that whosoever is born of God sins not. Yes. But he that is begotten of God keeps himself, and that wicked one touches him not. Yes, verse 19. And we know that we are of God, yes. and the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world lies in wickedness, but we do not lie in wickedness yes. because we are of God, verse 20. And we know that the Son of God is come yes. and has given us an understanding yes. that we may know him that is true. Yes. And we are in him that is true, yes. even in his Son, Jesus Christ. Yes. This is the true God and eternal life. You see now. So I like... I want media team to highlight understanding there. We were given understanding. <clears throat> Even this song that we, we said is we are, we are praising out of understanding. That understanding we were given is, is also a gift. We know that the Son of God is come. It appears simple. Easter, the, 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 what do they call it? Those rituals which they do. They say today is a palm day. day. Yes. So, but Apostle John says, we know, mm -hmm. we have knowledge mm -hmm. that the Son of God come. is come. Yes. And he has given us an understanding. An understanding. And what is this understanding? That we that, may know yes. him, that is true. So that we may know him, that is true. And we are in him. So that, that we true. may know that we are in him, that is true. And in his son, Jesus Christ. So that we may also know that we are in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. So if you know this, this is the true God and eternal life. So this is what we know. We now have an understanding. We have received this understanding. Mufangeri, were you blessed? 
Uh, very much, Pastor. I really want to thank God uh, for the testimony of Christ from the, from the story of Jehoshaphat and the children of Judah. Uh, of not, I can say, we are looking at a people who are about to lose their possessions, which God had distributed. And you pointed to us that this message truly is a post-Calvary a message, post-Calvary transaction, because the, because the cross in itself marked a, the, the, marked a new season, a new season in which people were being delivered from darkness, going to the, uh, to the, to the kingdom of light. And that is new season now in which they were. It's a new season in which people now are receiving a new possession. And you highlighted that the possession is about the everlasting life that we have in Christ Jesus. To them, it was just a land. But we understand that was really a, a type. It was preaching concerning the... New Testament, the possession that we have of a kingdom. Uh, our Lord actually said, do not uh, be of cheer, be of good cheer. It is your father's desire to give you the kingdom. So the father wants to give the kingdom, but that kingdom cannot be given without the sacrifice of the cross. So the payment now had to be done first. But after the payment of the price, we see now the establishment of a house because David is the one who gathered the material for the building and for this, the, 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 the cost of construction uh, was the burden of David. But the construction of the house is now the burden upon, upon uh, Solomon, upon the Holy Spirit now in the building of the work. Uh, in this time now of the building of the work, the possession now uh, needs to be safeguarded because the three, the trio, the company, uh, the battalion, as you said it, uh, comes in the three in three, meaning the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, uh, according to First John chapter two fifteen and sixteen, which should not be part of us now. Looking at Ephesians, where we read, uh, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, uh, and walk in love as Christ he has loved us and has given himself for us in offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling uh, server. But fornication, now it was a, the price paid, but a new life now, because we have to live a new life, after the price has been paid, after the resurrection uh, that we were to attain uh, through the process of baptism. So the thrust of the message was now, how are we to overcome the three, the Ammonites, uh, the, the, the Moabites, and, and the Edomites? How are we to overcome them? We, there has to be somebody with the Spirit of God upon him, a servant of God, a, 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 a Levite who is to direct and to lead the whole team in a path that is a path of victory. But that victory was not going to come by our own efforts, by our own fighting, because sin in the first place was not our was not our challenge. We were not equal to the challenge of sin. Only Christ had to be a sacrifice that was meant to challenge sin and to make sure that whoever is going to be delivered from the sin problem will be benefiting from the battle or from what Christ is now offering us because it's a possession. Now, the, the problem now that would arise now is when after the, after the cross and after being handed over the possession, we see now people now beginning to lose that possession. Uh, they are not able to fight to, to keep 
that which God had granted them. But uh, we, we realized that now for us to then overcome that trap, because it's a trap in which we can lose the possession, we need to depend on the trust that we have on God, the trust that we have on the work that had been done uh, by our Lord Jesus Christ. We stand on the word according to, uh, according to the, the, the advice or the encouragement that comes through the prophet. And the minister, therefore, will be giving a word which will, which upon which the church now will have to stand upon for their victory to be assured. And, and you have shown us that now a song has to arise, a new song uh, has to arise. People have to be put in, in a position where they can now begin to worship God, to sing praises unto the name of the Lord. But that, that now the singing, the praising, the worship of God will be their victory, will be the victory of the people. But what victory, what praise, what praise, because it's all about praise. What praise you showed us uh, concerning how the message of the New Testament is a praise that we have to always uh, live by. First, we have to live by it uh, before confessing, before speaking it. We have to live by the word of the New Testament, which is preached through the ministers. Uh, whom God ordains. So there should be an adherence to the message uh, as given by the servants of God. We have to follow that and for us to be victorious. I was looking also at verse number 11 of Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verse 10. Uh, uh, it was saying, Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and having no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them. We have to depend on the, on the grace of the Lord and also to bring forth the fruit of repentance, but not to have fellowship with the works of darkness because the works of darkness, they want to repossess. They want us to lose our possession, which is eternal life. And I also looked at how the Lord spoke concerning the worship of the people, the praise, in, in Matthew chapter 15, uh, verse 16, he says, uh, verse number 7, rather, You hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, These people draweth nigh unto me with their mouths, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And that heart you were talking about, an understanding the true praise is an understanding. God wants to see an understanding in us according to Psalms 47. So where is that understanding? Do we have it? Do we possess it? Verse number 9, But in vain do they worship me. And what is their worship? They are teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. So he said, you, you are worshipping. And where is the worship? He said, ah, your teaching is worship. You are teaching according to the doctrines of and the commandments of men. So when we say we are worshipping and we are praising the Lord in the New Testament, it has to be according to the doctrine of Christ. And when we have that doctrine, our worship is not about the lip service, it's not about speaking words, but it's now about the doctrine which has been granted unto us and when we embrace that, we are now victorious as children of God, and we are now able to resist the the the, the Ammonites, the 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 Malpites, and the the Edomites from Mount Se. So it it was indeed a marvelous message. I really I really like it, and I I have been blessed quite a lot in the teachings. Yes, we we thank the Lord, evangelist. Uh, maybe we have some who have joined us for the first time. You have heard this message. You have been pricked in your heart. You say, I want to be saved. What should I do? Because that is the question which most people always ask. They say, what must I do? I've heard this message. Where should I go? 
how should I start? The instruction that we have in the word of God for those whose hearts would have been opened by the Lord to believe his message, the instruction is for you to repent. You must be repent and uh, according to Acts chapter 2 from verse 37 and 38, we see the Apostle Peter explaining very well that those who would have listened to the word of God believed that message. They are supposed to repent and they are supposed to be baptized in water for the remission of their sins and then they are going or they shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So this is the order. You repent and after repentance you go for water baptism and then you receive the Spirit of God. So that's how you must do it. But maybe to further clarify, uh, when you repent, uh, you also have to respond to that repentance. It's something that comes from your heart to say, I no longer want to live this life. I no longer want to continue in the manner that I used to live. Uh, I've seen that wherever I was going, I was lost. And if we go to Romans chapter 10, uh, verse number 9 and 10, it is very clear there that uh, what should one do if you have believed in your heart, what should you do for you to be saved? The scripture says from verse 9, That, that if, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth yes. the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10. For with the heart man believes unto salvation, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yes, so with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's why we say, if you have believed the message, you must do a confession to salvation. This confession is made unto salvation. So you have to confess with your mouth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you as you make this confession. I want you to make this confession from your heart and I want you to express what you have believed in your heart. That is, if you have heard the message concerning Christ, the message is centered on Christ uh, dying for many kind on the cross. He died from people's sins on the cross he himself, he never sinned. And when he died on the cross, he brought to an end the law of Moses. He brought that dispensation to an end and he ushered in a new dispensation which is called the New Testament where we are going to learn the word of God um, under the grace of the Lord. So if you want to make this confession with me, raise up your hand wherever you are and... Uh, Follow this confession after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because of this word. I thank you because you have loved me. I confess that I am a sinner who lived a life of riotous, in disobedience, in disobeying the instructions and commandment of the Lord. I thank you because today, you have opened my heart to believe the word. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord and that you are King. And I believe that God raised you from the dead. I thank you because on account of your sacrifice, I can now be saved. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. And thank you for laying down your life because of my sins. Amen. So if you have made this confession, uh, you are now awaiting baptism. And if you go to Acts chapter 8 and see what happened to others who believed before you, who are there in the scriptures, we see there uh, the Ethiopian eunuch also meeting Philip the evangelist. And from verse 35, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, 
See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. You see now. So this is what is going to happen to you as you continue to follow uh, these our services on various platforms. You are going to come across uh, invitations or announcements where baptism is going to be announced. Uh, please take notes of those announcements and uh, you must expedite your baptism. Don't take long by just listening to the word of God without fulfilling what the instructions of the Lord are saying. Those who believe, they must be baptized. That's the instruction of the Lord. So please take note of those uh, announcements on baptism and please come or travel to whatever place where baptism is going to be conducted so that you uh, become a child of God. That is what you are waiting for. But as for now, uh, continue to have fellowship with other brethren. Don't stay alone. Don't be alone. Uh, meet with uh, other brethren so that you fellowship together with others. So this is the uh, confession to salvation that I wanted to help you with. So we thank God this was our service today. Let's continue fellowshipping with brethren and let's enjoy the word of God. Mm -hmm.